Ahoy hoy and welcome to the video, a little bit late. <laughs> I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, uh, and I know I said on a community post that I would try and get a video out at least once a, a week, but I have had some serious trouble in getting any recording time done because my current environment is terrible for recording. Today we're going to try and get through my 7,000 contest entry. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. It really helps the channel out when, you know, the subscriber number go up. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is something I wrote after the incident where uh, nature tried to give me a skylight I didn't want in my uh, living space. Item number, SCP-7000. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-7000-1 is not allowed to leave Foundation employment for any reason. SCP-7000-1 is to be monitored at all times and improbable events should be logged. Additional measures are to be taken once there is a better understanding of the core anomaly or anomalies involving SCP-7000. Description. SCP-7000 is an unexplained probabilistic phenomenon surrounding Dr. Jeremiah Sumerian, hereafter referred to as SCP-7000-1. This phenomenon causes unusual and unlikely events to occur in any situation where SCP-7000-1's life is in danger. While these unusual probabilistic outcomes do not necessarily result in SCP-7000 remaining uninjured, it has uniformly led to a survival in all recorded circumstances. This effect does not extend to any other individuals or property surrounding or near to SCP-7000-1. SCP-7000 occurs without need of conscious thought and without any regard for the wishes of SCP-7000-1. Additionally, when SCP-7000-1 deliberately places himself in life-threatening situations, SCP-7000 will still prevent SCP-7000-1's death. Current understanding of this effect indicates that it has been in place since SCP-7000-1's birth. It is also believed that some or all information regarding SCP-7000-1's life prior to Foundation employment is fabricated. SCP-7000-1 is not visibly aged during his 10 years in Foundation employ, though given the short time period, this is not a definitive indicator. It has been surmised that the phenomenon that keeps the entity alive during short-term emergencies has also acted over the long term to prevent incomplete or imperfect cell replication. Tissue samples extracted from SCP-7000-1 are not under the effects of SCP-7000 and appear to replicate and die normally. Show SCP-7000-A incident record. The following is a log of the investigation which led to SCP-7000's discovery. On July 21, 2022, Dr. Sumerian was staying at a Foundation safe house in central Alabama. Around 1600 local time, a flash storm generated severe winds. These winds sheared off a large section of a tree which then fell onto the room that SCP-7000-1 was working from. Despite total destruction of the room, SCP-7000-1 suffered no serious harm. As part of the project Dr. Sumerian was investigating per his duties as a floating ethics committee liaison, several macroscopic probability detectors had been placed around the safe house to protect against an incursion by agents of the serpent's hand following an attack the previous month. These detectors recorded a spike of 16 demorves. A demorve is a general measurement of how much a particular incident deviates from standard probabilistic predictions. A higher number indicates a more improbable result at the time of the event. Given the demorve's scale's baseline of 1, this was determined to be significant enough to investigate. This investigation came to three conclusions. The probability event was of significant nature and protected SCP-7000-1 from harm. The serpent's hand was not active in the area at the time of the event, and it is unlikely that this probability event was causally linked to the attack on the safe house in June. And three, Dr. Sumerian's personal history both before and during his foundation employment indicates frequent similar events. Considering this, the Ethics Committee has placed Dr. Sumerian on administrative leave until such a time as this and similar events can be fully investigated. The following is an incomplete log of events gathered in the last 48 hours involving Dr. Sumerian both before and during his employment at the SCP Foundation. On December 8, 2009, in Maputo, Mozambique, an estimated Domarv reading of 4 was applied to an incident where a helicopter Dr. Sumerian was riding in suffered a severe mechanical failure resulting from an impact with a rocket-propelled grenade that did not detonate. The helicopter was able to make a safe landing and all crew and passengers survived. In March 19, 2010, in Vladivostok, Russia, 
A rating of 12 was applied to an incident where, during a fact-finding mission in eastern Russia, Dr. Samarian became involved in a short relationship with a Russian GRU agent. This mission ended after Dr. Samarian's hospitalization following a bomb explosion and the derailment of the train on which he was riding. He was one of two survivors of that event. April 26, 2012, in Erie, Indiana, an unknown rating was applied to an incident where Dr. Sumerian was isolated from his team during an investigation into an occult organization that was attempting to summon a trio of deities. He used the gun of one of the fallen agents and eliminated the emergent entities before they were fully formed. On October 11th, 2014, in Mobile, Alabama, a rating of three to six was applied to an incident where, while shopping, Dr. Sumerian was trapped under three Sealy Posturepedic hybrid mattresses for 28 hours. He was freed after the store owner returned on Monday morning. While this has been reported anecdotally by others who learned of it afterwards, it has not yet been independently verified. On February 29, 2016, near Montgomery, Alabama, on Interstate 65, a rating of eight was applied to an incident where Dr. Sumerian was involved in a firefight during the transport of a highly dangerous SCP object. He managed to deal with his pursuers, but the vehicle he was riding in was struck by a semi-trailer truck carrying coal. Dr. Sumerian was the only survivor of both the incident and the following accident. January 12th, 2019, in Biloxi, Mississippi, a rating of 24 was applied to an incident where Dr. Sumerian was thrown out of a plane by Chaos Insurgency agents while flying approximately 2.5 kilometers above sea level. He survived with serious but non-life-threatening injuries after crashing through several tree branches, landing in a trampoline in a backyard, and then bouncing into a pool. Note, I know we experience unlikely events daily, but this should have been investigated more thoroughly when it occurred. Dr. Gears. On June 25th, 2021 at Site 88 in Alabama, a rating of 32 was applied to an incident where Dr. Sumerian survived the explosion of a GoTrax hoverboard that Dr. Gerald was attempting to demonstrate the use of. On July 21, 2022 in Birmingham, Alabama, a rating of 16 was applied to the incident described in the Dash A log above. Dr. Gears has performed a post-incident interview with SCP-7000-1. The log of that interaction is below. The date of the interview? July 24, 2022. The subject, SCP-7000-1. Interviewer, Dr. Gears. Begin log. I wanted to talk about the incident at the safe house. Yeah, the roof tried to kill me. What happened? Was it a tree? Well, from the looks of it, a tree split in the next yard over, but then it fell into another tree that split off and crashed into the house. How much damage was there? Catastrophic. Honestly, if the hand already knows about the place, we ought to just put it down as a loss. You are probably right. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm shaking up a bit. I mean, I was five feet from certain death. I don't think it's fully hit me yet. I can imagine. But this is not the first time something like this has happened. Yes? Are you talking about the plane thing? That and a few other things. The bombing in Russia comes to mind. There is a delay of several seconds before the interview continues. So you want to know how I got scarred? No, I went to parse an incongruity. Gears, you tell me if they were considering a designation for me, right? Do you feel as though you need one? I've survived some things that other people didn't. Statistically, that's bound to happen from time to time. It does seem to happen more often to you than others, does it not? We work for the Foundation. We're put into life and death situations regularly. If we didn't survive, we wouldn't be here to ask about how we survived. Are you familiar with the Demarov sensors? I am. And? And I think it's more interesting when the character survives. What is more interesting? The story. I mean, if your character's died every time something bad happened, there wouldn't be much of a reason to keep reading. Sumerian, I don't understand. Well, that's because I'm not talking to you. SCP-7000-1 looks directly at the hidden camera recording this interaction. I don't want to die. I said it. I mean, it's not something I'm proud of, but it is something that is certainly true. I think it's true for a lot of people, actually. It's just such a primal fear that it's hard for people to put it into words normally. Actually, let's break out of the box. It's a bit more confining than I'd like. See, I've always known I don't want to die on some level, but it wasn't until I started writing on the SCP Wiki that it came into sharp focus. I first found the Wiki in 2012, so like 10 years ago next month. I was browsing around on TV trips and kept coming across tropes from the wiki on other pages. Eventually, I clicked through, and it wasn't quite as big at the time, but it was still pretty popular. 
And then I tried to write something, and it was very bad. It hit on all the cliches, used a copyrighted image. And it was, on some level, a little embarrassing, I think. So I left, you know? I came back in 2014, and then I tried again. The wiki's attitude at the time wasn't necessarily always positive to new writers, but I persevered, and I got something to stick. I also, it wasn't very good, but it was good enough. And then I bounced around for a while, finding writers I liked, learning from them, then bouncing off when they disappeared, and on and on and on. Now... Now, I think it's fair to say I'm one of the site's most recognizable authors, right or wrong, because, you know, <laughs> but it's certainly true. What does that have to do with my fear of death? Well, I create in order to be unforgettable, to be undeniable. I want to make worlds and stories that will be told long, long after I'm gone. And my immortality is in my work. My work is how I breathe. I create a character that hates himself and people love him. I create continents or forests and nations and mountains with long story histories. And then I can just shatter them in a moment. It's all there, but it's all a part of me. So always and for all time, writing is how I know myself. I've always held that to be the truest purpose of creating anything, to know oneself. I started to find patterns in my writing, too. I mean, I write about a mortal white guy's a troubling amount. But what does that say about me? I think the white guy part is probably negotiable, though it probably speaks to a certain amount of self-projection. But the immortality comes up again and again and again, and I think it's like I said earlier. I just don't want to die. And then two days ago, the roof really did cave in on me, and I was left sitting amongst rubble, looking over at the heavy wooden rafters that landed edgewise on where my bed used to be. Rain started pouring in, and I had to act to save some stuff pretty quickly and immediately. But about two, but about two hours later, I finally had a moment to like sit and reflect, and I just kind of sat there and stared off into the middle distance, reflecting on the events of the day, worrying about the future, certainly, but also knowing that I'd come mightily close to the one thing I most fear. And then I finally grabbed the laptop that I'd managed to save from the dust and chaos and rain, and I opened it up, and I sat on the floor of my living room. I loaded up Discord, and I started talking about it. And then hours after one of the most horrific things in my life happened to me, my main thought was, I'm going to write this into my 7K entry, because why the fuck not? And here we are. I hope you like it, because this just proves what I've always known deep down. One way or another, I am going to live forever. Thanks for reading it, and genuinely. Good luck to everyone else. Dr. Gears, so are you saying that you are immortal because your author wants you to live on after he dies? SCP-7000-1 returns his attention to Dr. Gears. I guess? We will take that into consideration then. End log. Thank you very much for watching. That's my 7K entry. I don't know what number I'm going to end up grabbing at the end of all of this. I'm definitely not going to win. But uh, I'm in place, of, I'm, it's rated at plus 190 right now, and it's not even been up for a month yet, so it's doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is what it is. This is <laughs> it's one of those things, it's like, you, uh, you, I wish it would do better, but also I can't, I, I, it would be silly of me to complain about its performance. But uh, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's good times. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it right now. If you enjoyed the video, now we already talked about hitting the subscribe button and the, and the notification button, but, uh, you know, if you'd like to help out, I will say, um, I have a GoFundMe. I'm going to have it in the top of the description, but there's also my Patreon. If you'd like to submit, uh, or submit, if you'd like to <laughs> pledge on Patreon, that would also be incredibly helpful. You can join Christina Amos and Sinjariki as hundred dollar pledges if you'd like, or any lower number is fine too. Uh, those, those are just the names that I announced based on the, uh, based on the pledge numbers. Um, uh, or you, you go to the GoFundMe and try and, uh, help me reach my goal where, cause boy, howdy, did I lose pretty much everything except for, except for my electronics, which is, would have been a pretty heavy cost. So, uh, those are the things I was managed to save in time before the rain and destruction got everything. <laughs> It got super moldy in there, but we finally cleaned it out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and thanks for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. I will see you all again next week. I'm not exactly sure when, but next week.